Oh, bloody hell, I might get emotional in this one. Yeah, I'm gonna get emotional. Hello, lovely people of YouTube, and welcome back to Mark on Life and Ghibli Time. Thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode, which was Laputa Castle in the Sky. If you haven't watched it, I will leave a link in the description and at the end. This is one I've been waiting to do since the beginning. I made the decision to go chronologically, but this is one of the ones that I wanted to introduce you to. Anybody out there who has never watched Studio Ghibli, this is one of the ones that I would put in front of you first. If I was putting my favourites in front of you, this would be one of them. It's one of the ones that, if you've never seen one, start today. So which one am I talking about? I'm pretty sure you can guess. My Neighbour Totoro. So My Neighbour Totoro came out in 1988 and it was actually part of a, a two film double theatrical release. It came out at exactly the same time as uh, Grave of the Fireflies, which we'll be doing next week, because they thought it would be too much of a financial risk to release it on its own. So it came out as a sort of double feature and it's been described as one of the greatest sort of movie double features of all time. Directed again by Miyazaki and the music again by uh, Hisaishi. Again, um, an amazing pairing. The direction and the music are absolutely fantastic in this one. So for this one, I want to jump straight into the plot because there are a lot of elements around it, but we'll, we'll work them out as we go. So what happens in My Neighbor Totoro? Well, this one's a bit funny. It's, if I was describing the plot, not that much happens. Compared to the last ones, and Nausicaa and Laputa, this is not a huge film. It's not an epic sort of journey. Miyazaki had done two fantasy type films in a row, and this is very, very different. So if you're expecting action and chases and this and that, this is not the film for you. It's a much smaller, much more personal movie. And it's sort of semi-autobiographical, or partially, um, autobiographical. There are pieces of Miyazaki's life directly in this film. But to describe it, like I was trying to describe the plot of um, Napoleon Dynamite to a friend the other day, and all I can really say is eccentric kid at school does things. You know what I mean? So here it's, it's similar, but I'll explain as I go. It's set in 1958 in technically an unknown part of um, Japan. It doesn't name it, but anybody who's sort of look behind the scenes, knows exactly where it is. Miyazaki um, lived and was uh, brought up around Sayama, in the Kanto Plains, Sayama Hills. And if you look at that area, it is exactly the same. There are direct lifts from the area, whether it be the, um, the shrines, the, uh, sort of the hills and the fields and all that kind of stuff. It's very similar. It's beautiful, beautiful rural part of the world. A father and his two daughters, Satsuki, aged 10, and Mei, aged 4, are moving to this area of Japan to be closer to their mum, who is in the hospital at the moment. Uh, it was originally going to be one girl rather than two. Uh, Miyazaki eventually decided that it would be easier and clearer to tell the story with two girls. Um, and even there we have an autobiographical detail Miyazaki's uh, own mother had spinal tuberculosis for nine years and was in the hospital uh, for that whole time. So again, a lot of details in this are directly lifted from his own life. So they move to this new house and it's a little bit sort of dirty and rotting, but they love it. And this is one of the things I love about Ghibli films is the settings. They're so beautiful. And in fact, so loved was the setting of this one, that they actually made an exact replica of the house, which is still standing, you can go and see it. It's in um, Aichi Commemorative Park, which is in a place called Nagakute in Japan. Um, and it's an, almost an exact replica inside and outside. So the girls move here and they love it, although it's a bit haunted and a bit weird, and they keep seeing these, what they call soot sprites, these little black sprites around there, which are actually seen in Spirited Away as well. But it's, it's a nice area and they're getting used to it and they're just waiting for their mum to come home. One day, while Satsuki, the older girl, is at school, Mei 
the younger one, sees a little forest sprite and follows it and chases it and finds her way into the forest where she meets for the first time Totoro. This giant uh, grey furry forest, uh, forest dweller or forest sprite. She then goes back and it's not that they don't believe her because she can't find her way back and show them because they, they kind of do believe her. They're not mean to her or anything like that, but obviously they didn't see it. But it's legend, so they sort of half believe. The name Totoro, um, actually, well, there's two, two thoughts to where it comes from. The first most obvious one is the script itself. It's a mispronunciation of the word troll, which in Japanese is Turoru. So instead of, it would be Tororu. So instead of Tororu, she said Totoru, um, which is not in the English dub of the script, but it is in the Japanese one. So that, that one makes uh, a lot of sense, obviously. But it's also thought to potentially be uh, a mispronunciation of a town called Tokurozawa, which is a town near where Miyazaki grew up. And apparently the children around there would mispronounce the name all the time. So it's thought that it could be um, one of the two. I think it's probably just uh, a mispronunciation of troll, but who knows. And from there, the plot is very simple. The girls are going back and forth from school, you know, waiting for the dad to uh, come home from work. The, the old lady next door and her, her grandson are sort of always present in their lives. Um, Totoro is coming in and out of the story. At some point, we have a major plot turn where the younger one, May, becomes lost, trying to reach um, her mum and take her some food to the hospital. And from there, it's a sort of um, a looking for her and, and, and um, everything working out. I don't want to spoil it. You can't really have spoilers because it's not really how this film works. What I would like to say is just how much I love this one. Um, Again, like I said, I just watched it again now, having watched it many, many times before, and it, it's as good every single time. Every element of this film is fantastic. The settings are so charming, so beautiful, so detailed. The voice acting, which in this one, the English dub, is um, uh, Dakota Fanning and Elle Fanning, so sisters in real life, sisters in the film. The script it's very simple, it's much less wordy than some other ones, there's no exposition in the same way, it's just a very very simple plot. And there's real moments of humour and real moments of emotion. It's, it's weird, the word that comes to, to mind is nice, and I know nice is a terrible descriptor for anything, it's like how you would describe a jumper, it's nice, you know, how was that risotto, it was nice, you know what I mean? But in this, I don't mean it in a derogatory sense. It's just nice. Everything's nice. It's A lot of people have described a common theme of Studio Ghibli films is that it restores your faith in humanity. And I know that sounds like a bit of a grandiose thing to say about it, but I can sort of see why they say it. There's no villain in this one. There's no sort of MacGuffin. They're not looking for a crystal or a, or a sword or something like that. You know, it's just... It's just a nice, simple, beautiful story. It's a tale done perfectly, is all I can say. It didn't actually do very well at the box office until things like this, um, Toys of Totoro, came out a couple of years after and it started to, to pick up money. But it didn't even break even for two years. So it's only afterwards that it started to be successful. Now, as I said in the first episode, Ghibli 101, so popular was the character of Totoro that he has appeared everywhere. He has appeared in other Studio Ghibli films like Pompoko, Kiki's Delivery Service and Whisper of the Heart. In um, other films uh, from elsewhere like Toy Story 3, as I said uh, previously. But also some slightly more odd tributes um, in 1994, um, an asteroid was discovered and named after Totoro. And then in 2013, a new species of worm, I forget the name and I didn't write it down, was discovered in Vietnam. And that was also named after Totoro. Never have I seen, in, in the film and outside world, such a reverence for um, a fictional character. So do I recommend this one? 
Hmm. Yes, obviously. Please, if you haven't ever seen one and you've been watching the series and you don't know where to start, start with this one, please. Please go and watch it. Especially if you've got kids. It's very kid-friendly in this one. There's nothing scary in this one at all. I mean, they're not a scary series, the Ghibli films, but some of them have got, you know, fantasy elements like, you know, um, dragons or witches or that kind of stuff. This one, you know, very, very kid-friendly. It's a beautiful story, perfectly done. I absolutely recommend it. Go and buy the Blu-ray. This is the, um, the Steelbook. I don't know if you can see that. It is beautiful. The Totoro on the front and the uh, cat bus on the back. And then inside, a bit more uh, artwork as well, if you can see that. Um, worth every penny. Um, yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. My Neighbour Totoro, go and watch it. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment. Have you seen My Neighbour Totoro? Are you going to go and see it? And what did you think? Uh, I'm on all the normal uh, social media platforms. Twitter and Instagram are both Mark Joseph Actor, so go and follow me there. Next week, we will be looking at Grave of the Fireflies. So, click over here if you want to see last week's episode of Laputa. And over here, if you want to see my face in some comedy, my movie series, Real Perspectives. So I'll see you for Grave of the Fireflies next week. But from me, Mark on Life and Ghibli time, I will speak to you soon.